start with the definition just to bring everybody on the same page. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of what MVP stands for, you're familiar with the concept, and uh, we just pick one of the quotes that is describing it from Eric Ries, I think it was one of the first ones, and it's saying um, a minimum wire product is a version of a product that um, allows validated learning um, with a minimum amount of effort. So, I mean, it sounds really fancy. It's, it's, it's awesome, right? So it's validated learning. If you think about it, um, it means your customers are showing you what they want, uh, what they're willing to engage for, and, and what they're willing to, to buy. Um, and you only have to spend very little amount of effort and time uh, to achieve that. And as soon as um, you have shipped something, they tell you what to do next. So, I mean, it's, it's an awesome concept, right? And it's a huge success. Um, it coming from the startup world, um, and it, if it works for startups, it's even working better for big corporations and for brands. And um, I'm, I'm sure all of you um, working on some kind of MEP or have used to work on that. And uh, yeah, if reality kicks in, it might be slightly different. Um, we, we ask some people what they, what they think about an MEP. If, if we're going to talk about MEP, what is the first thing that comes in your mind? And um, it's, it's kind of controversial. Um, some people are just stating that's kind of overrated. It's a different uh, way of getting things done. Um, others are saying it's um, a nice concept, but the application is kind of difficult. So it might be the reason why we're standing here today. And uh, even others are saying um, it's just a way of uh, avoiding detailed design and providing true quality. Um, yeah, ki kind of true. Um, uh, there's, there's never a version 2.0. We all know that. That's also kind of true. And, and even others are just challenging if we all know what's behind it and what's the idea behind it. Um, and, and yeah, we try to summarize this in one picture. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, if you're into Monty Python, you probably know this scene. What's happening here, you have uh, King uh, Charles meeting the Black Knight. And, um, you know, the story of the Black Knight was that he was a little bit overconfident and he was refusing to give up. And I think it's a nice metaphor for the MVP, uh, MVP approach because, you know, you're confident and you can make it and then, you know, the budget is being cut and then you lose one arm and then, you know, the time is being cut because we have a deadline and then maybe also the flexibility is being cut because we suddenly need to have a fixed scope. And when the additional scope, uh, scope comes in or along the way, then you have a problem. But, you know, if you may click <laughs> one once again, please click. Yeah. This is just a scratch, you know, we have to move on. Like we, it doesn't matter, like what will you do? Like will you bleed on me? You cannot, we have to move on. You have to go on with the project and you have to basically deliver based on the, you know, requirements that you have, time, budget, everything, yeah. So my name is Paulina. I'm with FFW since two years already. I'm client manager. Um, I'm happy when clients are happy. I'm happy when the teams are happy uh, and I'm happy when we can deliver on time. And with me today, Thomas. Yeah, I'm, I'm Thomas. Um, I'm the head of digital platform at Leica Camera. Um, I'm, I'm industry in, in, in the industry quite a while, and I'm, I'm still a convinced advocate of agile methodology, even if we talk about a lot of challenges today. Um, yeah, if you if you haven't heard about Leica Camera, uh, I'm sure you have heard about FFW, um, but shortly about Leica Camera, we are a, a photo manufacturer. Um, um, the company is around for over 150 years, so it's kind of the inventor of the compact camera. So it's the company that first came up with the idea to produce a small camera you can carry around with you. And um, yeah, we work together with FFW. Uh, yes, we are FFW, we've been founded in 2000. We uh, have our headquarters in Copenhagen. However, we have uh, 25 offices across the world. Uh, we deliver digital strategy, experience, innovation um, for, for plenty of customers. And of course, we're hiring, just, just in case, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna uh, set the focus on today? So we, we know when we talk about agile methodology, this is a huge deal. So I think they could fill another talk and, and even another conference. So we would just like to focus on uh, some of the aspects uh, regarding the MVP, which is scoping, obviously, um, which is expectation management, um, and which is the team, which is the, the baseline of everything. And uh, w we try to find the sweet spot between all three of those. I'm not sure if we found it yet, but we're still searching. And um, just a bit of context why we're standing here today together, um, because we did a project and we're still working on, on that solution. We're still here, yes. <laughs> we're still <laughs> here. And um, obviously the Leica website is based on Drupal, and we now, we launched it last year, and now we're improving it constantly. 
And uh, we would like to share our experiences of this, this project and, and the time after that. Um, just a little disclaimer, we are not agile coaches, so I'm sure some of you know much better about agile methodologies and all this kind of stuff uh, as we do. Um, and obviously we also don't come from a startup environment where the concept may be working much better than in a corporate kind of agency client relation and so on. So um, we would like to share from that point of view. So um, different experience. The real talk, right? <laughs> the real talk, yeah. All right, um, let's jump in straight away to scoping. Um, and I promise this won't be the last chart because as I said, it's not a lecture about methodology. It's more like sharing our experiences, but um, it, 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 I think it's, it's, it's a very um, valid picture. Um, and as you know, there are four values within a project to make it successful, to adjust it, um, to be successful, which is um, scope, obviously, um, which is uh, time or the schedule, uh, which is cost, the budget, and it's quality. Um, regarding quality, this is something we don't see as a, as a value to adjust. Quality should all be the, the highest you can make um, to fit your brand values. So this is not yet something you can adjust. And um, on a classical project management, you always start with the scope, yeah? You define what you're gonna get, like, like in a restaurant, what I ordered, I would like to get. I ordered some schnitzel and beer, and I would like to get it, please. And um, in those kind of projects, mostly, kind of cost was an issue because it was over budget or at least time was stretched and you raised deadlines and stuff like that. And some smart people came up with the idea to change the system and say, okay, let's, let's uh, fix the cost there or they had fixed the cost because it was a startup and they had just a budget. And um, let's also set a time where we would like to ship something pretty soon, obviously. And let's keep the scope open. Um, just let's do what we can. Let's, let's do the best stuff that is most valuable to us. First, always reevaluate what to do next and what's best. And uh, let's see what we can make it. Um, and, and just, yeah, stick to cost and, and time. And um, I, I'm still, and we still believe this is a great concept, but it brings the core challenge when you're talking about MVP and Agile. Um, and that is that the scope is always flexible. You, n you never know what you're gonna deliver until the, the, the first release and even for the second one, you even don't know what will be in there. So that is the core challenge to, uh, to the Agile uh, methodology. And um, yeah, why, why should we bother? Why do we think it's still a great concept? And as in the, in the initial phrase was stated, um, oh. <laughs> some important notification from the team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> system is down. <laughs> um, yeah, so the core, the core of the idea still stands. Um, you only d deliver or uh, implement what is really important, what really brings value, and you're faster. You're way more efficient um, than in other ways. And what comes with it is it's kind of a collaboration. It's, it's a cooperation. Um, it's, it's co-everything, yeah? You work together, agency and client, uh, within the entire organization, obviously with your customers and your users. So you build this together. And this is way more efficient than just building something and see what happens. So um, we still believe in it, but um, yeah, it's a challenge, right? Yeah, and the beginnings are always tough, right? So how, how do you decide what you're even taking, you know, into the MVP scope, right? So obviously it has to be a product that it's functional and can be used, right? So this is maybe not uh, something that you want to have uh, as an as a MVP version, right? And you have to kind of, you know, you have to gather requirements, you have to sort through the clutter, you have to make a tough decision, you have stakeholders, you have, you know, needs that have to be met, uh, maybe some, some political uh, decisions in the background that has to be taken into consideration. And you have to remember that some parts of the projects or even maybe some projects won't be suitable for the MVP approach like by default, by design basically. So this is also something that you have to think about it. And I think even for like, you know, premium brand as Leica, you know, when, when we delivered like a, you know, the, the website was like half done, you know, it's, it's super difficult to, you know, explain it, right? It, to internally. it definitely is. I mean, we are a premium brand, like only perfection is the right level of quality to ship to customers and then you come up with an unfinished website this is really hard to, to digest so mm -hmm. and we had a, we had a hard time doing that um, so I think next time maybe we do it differently but um, that's that's really a, a difficult task yes so and yeah I mean even if you manage to decide what's in the MVP what is core what is valuable to you um, you're, you're not done in the process um, 
you have to do this task all over again. Yeah, if you manage to tell your client or your stakeholders what will be the, the final result, what is the, pr the first iteration of the product, um, this is not valid anymore after two or four weeks, and you have to start over again. And our recommendation is, and to be honest, we are not 100% there, uh, <laughs> probably will get there, um, be as structured as you can on the whole prioritization process and deciding what will be what be the most important, most valuable feature. And and I find, I mean, there are a lot of frameworks out there like RISE or Moscow or whatever. You, you know much better than we, are, we do. Um, there are frameworks there and, and pick one and, and really um, stick to that one. Yeah, explain everybody how you do that. Make it most transparent as you can. Make people participate on that and really stick throughout the entire process on that on that method because this is one core thing. If you don't know what you're going to deliver, at least show people how you decide on the on the go all the time. So, yeah, let's talk about the projects and products actually for a second, right? Because you know we have the the project mindset and we have the product mindset, and very often we are facing. Uh, clients or projects that are, that are done according to the project characteristics. And you may think actually that the product characteristic, uh, the project characteristic, sorry, is very, you know, close to agile, but it's actually not really. It's not really about the delivery. There are some, you know, um, some, some stuff that you have to consider. You have to consider that the funding will be different, right? So if you think about the project, you're basing, you know, the you budget on based on resources and time. Actually, when you fund for the product, you fund for life of the product, right? So you you just you base your decisions on on business needs, right? So um, you know, um, work stops on the fixed date for the project. Yeah, the project is done. We're moving on. We we move on to another project. This this just doesn't work to for building products. So you we have to um, think about that. And of course, there's lots of change uh, that has to be embraced when we think about the products. Like we, we could you know, write a book about how many discussions we've been having with also here teams and, you know, and, and we together with the stakeholders, like why, why are things changing? And you have to just accept the fact that the change will come, right? So focus on the features, not on the plan. And of course, track the project by, by business value, which also has some implications, right? Absol absolutely. And I mean, killing the project idea is, is really hard for senior management to understand. And, and it's really a hard time to get this through because they need some, some items they can kind of control, put budget on or put budget away and then, you know, uh, know what they get, know what they, what they buy. So um, I if we come to like senior managers and ask for budget and uh, tell them this is a commitment for like three to five years at least, they really get nervous. So, uh, and, and we don't have a final solution for that, just maybe avoiding the term project, talk about initiatives and a commitment and products and so on. So really to get the idea across, um, this is a tough one. Yeah, absolutely. And this also has another implication when we're talking about, uh, about money basic uh, basically and about funding. So. The project mindset influences the decisions in terms of uh, budgeting and, you know, the project mindset influences the budget. So the budget is fixed and sometimes it's fixed along the fixed scope and a fixed timeline. We'll be talking about this, like what, what consequences does uh, that does have. And of course, when, when the client comes to agency, we have to do some estimation. If we know this, you know, it's always a hard discussion. Like how do we estimate the project? Like how do we even start this conversation, right? So we're already at the beginning, back to square one, where we have to say like, can we maybe you know keep the scope flexible and the rest fixed right and then of course this is super important for the for for the agency in terms of planning right because if you plan with the project you actually theoretically have a team booked until a certain date and then theoretically the team would have to move to another project we, we kn which we know that won't happen if you build product you have to have a long breath right you have to take months you have to take years maybe to do to, to you know be somewhat ready at some point, right? So this is also something that makes lives easier for, for clients, for client managers, for pro project managers as well, right? It's a different uh, traffic, uh, uh, tracking. So um, yeah, basically product mindset makes a lot easier when talking about project like ours. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, let's, let's come to the second part, expectation management, which is my favorite part. Um, I mean, first, why why should we consider like expectation management? I mean, on, on agile methods, you always hear like uh, teams are autonomous. They they decide. I mean, we know this from the entire community here. They know best what's what's good for the user. They have done all the research. There should not be a manager or a client to decide what what has been done. And and even better, the teams should be self-organizing. I mean, this is really that that's the way we should head to. But um, 
no thanks, this is, this is not reality. In reality, I mean, not talking about startups again, but in a, in a corporate organization and working with agency and, 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 and client, um, you're never autonomous. The team has not the mandate to decide everything. This is just not, not what, what is happening there. There's always kind of a, a sponsor, somebody who puts the budget on it. Um, there is senior management. There are other departments that have a stake in that. So there are other people around that would like to have some influence. This is just the reality, just face it. Um, and our recommendation is first understand who are those people and they're probably not on your project uh, within your, your scope, your stakeholders. Um, obviously not your direct client most of the time. Um, and there are other people in the organization they would like to have the influence. So understand who they are and what they want. And I can tell you it's not o always like features or even business values or KPI. Sometimes it's strategic or political or whatever. Um, just try to consider that in the very first phase of the project and and start the conversation about it and um secondly when we talk about expectation management um you can uh, set up a really great method and a great team and everything um consider the m agile metro how, how uh, agile metro your organization is yeah ha do they do they work on, a, on an agile setup do they do they know what an mvp is do are you the only mvp in the entire organization or are there others um uh, how, how is the company already progressed on that topic and and just yeah understand where they are and again um, if they are way on a, uh, on a on a different kind of mindset um, also kind of educate them and, and tell about your project and explain how the method is going to work and why this is better than the other one and so on so really consider not only your project setup and and uh, your program and your product consider the entire organization um, where, they, where they are. Yeah, and I think this is also nothing that you can do at one day or day one, right? It's like a, it's a long process and you really have to It, have it really it takes yeah. time. So I, I mean, I, I know some insights from uh, Allianz, the big insurance company, and they have, they have went for the, the Spotify model. They have set up like tribes and tribe leads and chapter leads and all those kinds of cool roles. But in, 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 in their minds, they're still very classical. They talk about project plans for three years ahead and, and all this kind of things. So really, it takes time to drive this change, even if the organization might have changed already. So really consider that and, and be patient um, for that. Yeah. And yeah, uh, if, if you think about um, expectation management, the most uh, asked question that I ask, get asked like weekly on a weekly basis, and I ask you as well, um, uh, hopefully not that often, is when, when are we done? Yeah, this is everybody wants to know when is it done? Yeah, and as we have described in the first place, y you're kind of never done. So, and, and yeah, uh, we, we found this kind of Schrodinger's product. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, you watch Big Bang Theory, otherwise, it <laughs> might look a bit strange. But <laughs> um, it's, it depends on the perspective, yeah. Are, are you done with the sprint? Yes, you should we ship something or, or with the release, yeah? I mean, we, we are on the stage to, to gain some insights. We're kind of done with that. Are we done with the achievement of the business value or uh, is the product successful? Not yet, no, we don't. Um, so it really, is, it's a tough one to explain somebody where you are and if, if you're done or not. You can only explain the process where you are, but not the final result. And uh yeah, so if someone's listening to the live stream <laughs> of our stakeholders, uh, please stop asking this question. Yeah, please, <laughs> we are never Ma done. Marco, please stop. <laughs> yeah, Marco, please uh, stop, yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, wha what is the solution for that? And, and we don't have answers for how you, how you uh, can solve all those kind of problems or issues. Um, but one core solution is, or one core approach is, be as transparent as you can, yeah? Um, make the people participate on your process explain how you're thinking how you're progressing what are you doing there how you uh, prioritize features um, what kind of insights you gain from users let people tell their opinion uh, wh what kind of features they think is, is most are most important and all those kind of things so really make them participate on the process be as transparent what you do and then you don't have to explain where you are all the time and one recommendation also don't promise too much. We tend to like, okay, the MVP is the first book, but then we will like achieve the holy grail. Yeah, I mean, a lot of business value and KPIs are rising and stuff like that. So um, it's not always the case. So like the first MVP is not really an exciting thing. So really like uh, don't promise too much on that. Yeah, and another point that is important is that yeah, we are here, right? So the moment we launch the MVP, we are somewhere at the beginning of the journey actually. And very often the MVP is being seen like the launch, right? Now new new story starts, new chapter starts. It's not. It's actually the first launch and then next will follow and the product will be developed. And I think this is very often 
not the case. The people don't understand it like that. And the other thing that is also important that you should have an idea what to do after the launch. Because our experience showed as well that we are focusing on the delivery and we are focusing on the on the deadline. And then of course we, we have hypercare and you know um, fixing bugs. And then what? Like no. Yeah, run away, exactly, right? Run away, run away. That's, that's exactly what it happens. Like everyone, uh, nobody knows what to do. There's no plan. There's a, well, kind of a backlog, but uh, nothing is really prioritized. And then, then that's a problem. So think about it before, before you launch the MVP. Absolutely. And we really, I mean, to be honest, we had a hard time on that. There was no plan after the, the release. So we really focused on that one, spent a lot of effort there. We're quite happy that it went kind of well. And then what? Yeah, going to the next features, next phase or wh what's, what's planned there and I mean we need to spend really a long time to stabilize and to improve and work on the backlog and all the feedback that came and we were not really ready to, to put new features in and uh, we didn't really set the expectation for that. So uh, that was a, a, a strong learning curve. Yes, and it, it, it influences everything, right? We, because, you know, it, 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 sorry, it influences budget, it influences planning, it influences discussions. Like if you do the process all over again, like imagine MVP, first MVP, maybe there's a second one, right? So this is the whole process over again. And if you don't do that before, you're already too late, right? So think about it, yeah. Yeah, and also emphasize on, on the long-term benefits, yeah, I mean, MVP is not the first or the, the final answer or the final solution, even not the second one or the third one. Um, just always think about, okay, what was the initial uh, goal or what are the, the values you would like to, to, to increase? Um, and, and always talk about this one as well. Um, process on one hand, on the other hand, really like long-term perspective and, and show how the progress is in terms of value and stuff. So I think this is a, a, a very interesting advice. And then um, uh, the last point is, um, yeah, keep discussing that, uh, keep explaining that, um, and, and um, yeah, keep repeating uh, the challenges you have. Exactly. So it's definitely not a, a sprint, it's a marathon, and everyone should be aware of that. It takes time, it takes, yeah, condition, you know, you have to be, you have to be fit for that, you have to be prepared. Yeah, and then last but not least, you know, we thought that it would make sense to appoint a minister of foreign project affairs which is actually Thomas uh, at Leica, and this person just, uh, you know, goes on the road show, uh, road show and uh, should expect no excitement, actually, especially <laughs> in the first phases, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and this is, this is really important not to uh, just focus too much on, on all your delivery and, and any team set up and all those kind of things. Uh, really keep in mind that you have to communicate what you're doing there. You have to keep people updated what's what's uh, coming next and stuff like that so really like define somebody and only it doesn't only have to be the client it can also be somebody of the team but uh, define somebody who is really taking care about that or maybe a couple of teams uh, team members are doing that but really make this also one priority in your entire process to start this conversation absolutely and it works uh, works both ways actually because you also have to have this kind of person internally in the agency right so you have to talk to to the team to you know designer you have to you know be there for them also so that they don't uh, they don't lose their sanity basically at some point right yeah all right then third one How oh you're fine with the time very good um yeah so uh i talked about team like are they independent no they're not and uh, self-organizing is also a very nice concept. And uh, in my experience, self-organizing teams are just happening after a team is really working for a very long time together. If they're really like uh, close together, then they are kind of in the, in the situation to uh, set up roles by themselves and define their own structure. Um, my recommendation is, or our recommendation is, um, provide some leadership, provide some structure, especially in the beginning of your work on your on your product and on your project and stuff um, really um, all this kind of stuff that we what we just mentioned needs some structure ahead so we really need to set this up need to define roles and all those kind of things um, it's not happening just automatically uh, self-organizing nice ideal but it's not reality and yeah um about success factors of the team and I know we can talk again like other talks and much better talks and YouTube tutorials and stuff are around about what makes a team successful and don't want to go too much in detail of that. But uh, we thought about, and I think it's four uh, aspects um, that we think are important to make a team successful. And uh, we haven't been there in the first place, so on the very beginning, this is more like a progress and we still uh, try to improve of all these kind of topics. But it's 
it's um, having a, a shared agreement on, on the goal, and you have to repeat that. You always do this in the very first phase, but then after months you forget what you actually would like to achieve. Have a clear understanding of methodology and also have some discussions about it. I mean, we have seen here like in an MVP, it's a different understanding what it is, and also like on, on certain frameworks or even Scrum or, or the way you, you, uh, you design your process is something everybody understands a bit differently. So have those conversations, you have Petros and so on. So clear understanding of methodology is important. Um, accountability, make clear roles, everybody should know what he or she is doing and, and responsible for, not responsible for, so make this clear. And um, yeah, the commitment, I think, is, 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 a, is a core success factor, right? Yeah, and you know, we, we joined a couple of sessions during the DrupalCon the last days, and uh, there were some sessions on this topic, actually, and everyone is saying, you know, um, we want to be one team, and we want to be the extensions of clients' team, and this has to be based on trust, you know, and and uh, commitment and engagement and stuff like that. And we we're discussing yesterday, actually, are we there yet? Like, the, are we are we already there? Is it even possible? Like, uh, to to what extent is it possible, actually, as a agency team, to be, you know, like the theme? So this is this is also like next conversation. So maybe we'll do a follow-up session next year, like <laughs> how that evolves. Let's see where we are. <laughs> yeah, but definitely, you have to be engaged. You have to have really strong leadership at least one person on one side these people have to you know bring it forward really because people will be you know working on the task on the on the tickets there will be panic mode now and then so you have to have someone who says saying who looks li is like you know acts like an umbrella over over everyone so this this helps a lot and of course accountability accountability builds trust basically if you say you do something you do if you don't then just say that as well right D like take take responsibility uh, for that be accountable for that search for solutions um, yeah improve and just just be accountable this is really i think the, the very important point um, in this conversation yeah and i think the core thing is is trust and communication all the time so really like to uh, pr preserve that, that trust and, and gain that trust, uh, especially also when you work together with the agency and the client relationship and so on. So really like focus on that one and, and we think it makes the team successful. And uh, yeah, is, is there a secret source uh, for a flawless execution? You're asking me. <laughs> yeah, I think we should answer this question all together. So if you would have put everything in place on the right time and have all the conversation going like be before you even start planning, most probably this would be a secret sauce. We know how the reality is. Um, there's probably not, so you have to you know, make the best out of, you of what you can do with the, with the given resources and time. Uh, however, we've been thinking about it if there is like one thing that really, really helps, and it's the communication. There is actually a study uh, that says that leaders who don't communicate enough, they are, they are being seen as less empathetic and less uh, you know, um, successful, basically, right? So, you know, this is also a quote from, from Mont Monty Python, we stick to, uh, to the convention. So you have to really answer all those questions, like what's your name, what's your quest, like what is the airspeed velocity of an unleadened swallow? Even the questions that you think like, why are you asking me this? It doesn't make any sense. Or a question that you have to answer 100 times. And the moment when you think, if I have to answer this question one more time, I will explode. This is the moment when the message starts landing, actually. So really, the, the, the over-communication brings everyone forward. And this, I think this is also your experience that you had already. A absolutely, absolutely. And a colleague of mine actually told me that. So um, please repeat what you're saying. And when the first time people just getting annoyed what you told them, then the mes message got across. So really, uh, I think repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, I think this is really important. And this is also a great marketing advice, by the way. So you don't have to, you know, come up with something new every time. Just repeat what works, you know. But this is this is another story, another session, maybe. All right. Yes. So at the end of the day, um, everyone says it as well. Yeah, we're in this together, kind of. We're in the same boat, but it's uh, getting easily forgotten when you run into trouble, when you run into some issues along the way. Um, so be there for the team. Be there for others, like either on, a, on on your side or my side. I hope that if I ask the teams uh, working with us internally, they would say uh, something nice <laughs> about our cooperation. Maybe we should have asked that. But uh, you really have to work towards it. It doesn't happen overnight. This is a process. This is uh, hard work. This is dedication and engagement from everyone involved in the in the topic, in the project, and only then it really works. 
I can only agree. Also from from client side, I mean, this is something, and you should always set the frame like that. That you you're working together and you you winning together and losing together. But this is really the reality. So if you if you set this value in the very beginning, I think this is the right way to go. And uh, yeah, talking about waiting to go. Yeah, last but not least. Um, so, you know, you don't have to love your job, but you have to at least enjoy it. So I was thinking that the moment that I think, oh, I have to call Thomas again, I might think about changing jobs. You know, you have to, you have to, you have not to enjoy. That <laughs> 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 it's, it's not bad at all. Um, no, but you have to enjoy it uh, somewhat, right? So you have to really, in order to be engaged, in order to be authentic, in order to dedicate your time, maybe going the extra mile once in a while, you know, um, taking some 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 more um, task that you that you would have, you have to enjoy it, right? So, yeah, sometimes we don't know where we're going. Sometimes we don't know what the outcome will be. We obviously don't know what the next year will bring, but at least we definitely know that it won't be boring. Like we know that. You know that, you know that. <laughs> 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 Certainly not boring. No, I, I can agree. And uh, with all the obstacles and all the challenges you're facing, and they will remain, uh, my advice is just um, keep accepting that, find smart solution for that. But always uh, remember, I mean, hopefully we together and, and all of you are the ones that bringing the change, that bringing the innovation, that try to, to do things better. So I think it's worth it to face all these challenges to really drive this change. And at the end of the day, if you want to, uh, you know, check your relationship with a client you can always ask Track to come him with on the you stage and <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> ask him to come with you to the drupal con and uh, hold the session together so we're here it really works thank you so much it was a pleasure to talk to you, thank you. <laughs> and we're hiring <laughs> you're hiring right y yes we're hiring Yeah, also for our project. Excellent talk, a great start for the day, I would say. Uh, Thank you. One question I have is regarding prioritization, especially you know when you have a big organization from the client side, uh, many stakeholders and everybody has a different perspective and different things they consider critical and crucial. Um, how do you deal with it and keep everybody happy in the end? I, I can't answer this uh, on, 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 a, on a final extent. So, um, as I said, I think you need to define the values um, that that makes things, yeah, what what is important for business for the brand. What are what are the uh, the common understanding of certain values? How to prioritize? And you really make you maybe you have a discussion before you even start the project about those kind of values. So, what is the the stuff you would like to achieve? What are the brand values? What is what is the stuff the the reason why we have this product? And then, uh, as I said, stick to a certain process and um, agree on that process. Make your, your business stakeholder also agreeing on that process. Is, are those the, the values or the methods where how, how we should decide what is important? Like, like how do we measure business value? Are there certain business strategic KPIs we consider there? Um, how about the users? Um, is, is user feedback? How we, how we can measure the user feedback? How we can take this in consideration, like tracking data or stuff like that? So really agree on those kind of values you, you take um, to decide what is important and, and stick to that. So I think if you repeat like this is the method on these are the standards, how we, how we decide, um, you, you would do much, uh, much easier than just having a completely open discussion all the time. But I can tell you it's always a challenge and it's also depending on the organization and the team, it's not one method, at least in my experience, not one method that works all the time you really have to find the right way because you have a different background on, on the business side, different background within your team, um, different insights you, you're able to gain. So really this is, this is a tough one. Um, yeah. And I also think that sometimes it basically helps to, to have a conversation that we are on a communication level again, right? So it's not that we both work together only. So we meet on a regular basis. We try to involve other stakeholders in some uh, like high level conversation so that they maybe also get a big picture. Maybe they will, uh, they get input from, you know, maybe someone from solutions, maybe someone from delivery, understand some, some, some processes and consequences. It sometimes helps to like tweak a little bit like the thinking and, uh, you know, accepting the, uh, the, the, the process and the changes that happen along the way, I would say.
can you give me a little information on the the budget and scope of this? And was it a migration? Was it an up, uh, was it a upgrade? Or tell us a little more. Detail Can't give you the <laughs> insights about the budget, but uh, it's um, it was yeah we we actually put the entire um, global website of like a camera, which is a like we have 15 different languages all over the uh, the world, and uh, we put this together uh, on, a, on a on a centralized platform and one core. Um, system of that platform was Trooper basically. Um, the platform also consists of, of like a commerce solution and like PIM data and stuff like that. But it was kind of a, a migration from an old CMS. Um, that's why also we had like a big bang solution to really merge all the content and try to uh, keep the the uh, kind of the, the feature set and the content we had on the old website also for the new one, which is kind of a tough one. Um, the entire project, um, I think the implementation was like six to nine months. Uh, the time we talked about this project was like three years to start and have the conversation how we run this and then we just started and then, uh, and then we launched it and uh, I think it took another six months to be on a kind of a stable. But, uh, but we do work in an agile way now, indeed, like also from the budgeting perspective. So we, we've managed to, to get yeah. there. We set up a retainer, not depending on a certain scope, just on a team setup and stuff. I have a similar question to him. Uh, I know that you couldn't uh, talk about the budget, but maybe about the uh, team members, how many team members you had in the project team, maybe also from you from the agency side and from you from the client, or maybe if you worked like in a um, um, sort of development or web squad or something like that. Huh? I have a program manager here sitting, but I won't be dragging him into this conversation. So yeah, we tried to keep the team small indeed. So we had a scrum master. Um, at the beginning, then we switched to a project manager ro uh, management role because we thought that that makes sense at this point. We needed someone to, you know, uh, keep a bit track of, of what's what's going on. Then we, um, so of course, some developers uh, needed, and this was changing quite a lot, right? Because we needed different, you know, different skill sets uh, at different uh, different stages. Of course, QA. Um, and at some point, we had the discussion about the product owner, right? This was because uh, we came to the conclusion that you're being the bottleneck, basically, or also Thomas, uh, other colleague. There was like everything was running through the same people, and we were just running into difficulties that we couldn't work, basically. So uh, you fired a product owner. That helped, I think, a lot to, to prioritize, to, you know, come up with, uh, with the next steps. Um, yeah, but we have the team is quite small, I think, on, on both sides, if I can put it like this. This, this is right. And I think what, what also brings a bit of a challenge now, we have a website that's running, so there's operational efforts and, and bugs coming in and stuff like that. And on the other hand, we have a lot of, lot of initiatives to really like uh, bring commerce in and stuff like that. So And to handle this with the existing team is also kind of a challenge. So we were thinking about maybe setting up a second development team and so on. So um, it's always a progress to adjust. Thanks. That's why we're hiring. Other questions? Thank you. Um, as a technical person in the room, I'm curious how you incorporate innovation in your MVP concepts. Because as a technical person, I often struggle to uh, translate technical needs sometimes laying foundational architecture of the project in the concept of MVP where we just want big red button or something. Because we know that the next step will be build something on top of that red button and if we don't have robust foundation and if we don't have innovation from project to project then we will not grow. Right, so maybe it's a question more to your side. I only can say the, the core uh, motivation for, for this uh, new website and, and the new platform was um, because we came from a very old infrastructure and, and we already had some innovation for building this new platform to designing to take Drupal and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, being innovative and having enough uh, also room to, to think about better solution I think is something we're always facing as a challenge. So. So at the very beginning, we of course had uh, a solution architect involved and there were lots of conversation how to set up the whole architecture. So it's not that we just started with something. There was a whole discovery phase to you know, find out what's really needed. However, it's, you know, it's not an easy question to answer because of the whole also political influences, the budgets as well, right? So there are some decisions that you have to, which, which, what, what tools do you use, right? There are 
best of breed tools are maybe different tools. So this is something that it's really difficult to decide, sometimes for the stakeholders that maybe don't have the understanding of the consequences, where we run into one of those where maybe the decision was not the best one, so we had to work around it and figure out how we can improve. Um, but this is something that we are looking also in, uh, into right now. So the, the, the MVP phase is, is done, we, we are an operational model and we have so many ideas that we also th thought, let's take a step back Let's you know take a look at the whole picture. Let's think, think you really think like dedicate time, maybe day, maybe two, maybe three. Just sit together and think what's the next next big thing, right? So the project is going like project. I'm sorry, the product is being developed. Yeah, um, habit. So the product is being developed, and what's the next big thing? Because you don't do this in the three months or six. Maybe this is next year. Maybe it's the year after, right? So this is again planning, early conversation. So we try. We'll see where it brings us. Any other questions? Uh, at what point did you decide to use Drupal, or was it? Uh, did it come from the uh, product side? Uh, did you know how you wanted to build it, or <laughs> yeah, when did you reach that decision? I'm not sure because I wasn't involved in that decision, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, I, I only can tell from what I've heard. Um, it, 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 I think it's two years ago, so even f before the project, we make an evaluation, what is, what is the best system for us? Mm -hmm. And I think one reason was uh, because it's open source and there's a lot of progress there. Um, it's a very flexible system. Uh, we have other like uh, interfaces we needed to build and stuff like that, so we needed to really uh, be able to customize everything. Um, Cost is another reason, probably, but um, I can't really tell you what is the this the, the main core difference compared to other systems, uh, because it's quite a while ago. And, and I'm not saying that Drupal is the, the, the in all aspects the best solutions. I mean, we have challenges in, for example, connecting the, the PIM system and and make this work all smoothly. So um, we have challenges, but uh, I think it was still a, a great decision for Drupal. But it, so it was just kind of uh, baked in from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please come to our booth. We may might find out why this decision has been made in the past. I think uh, it's it won't be hard to find out, but at some point, yeah, uh, somebody decided that before our time. If there are any other questions, we are uh, at FFW booth, uh, so please come by. We will be there. Uh, let's have a conversation. Uh, our team is also there, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Have a great day. <laughs>